In this video, we're gonna talk about the five most important points for people looking for life insurance for people who are in hospice. Point number one is what do the insurance companies consider when offering or not offering people who are in hospice final expense of life insurance, burial insurance, or cremation insurance. Now, people who are in hospice are in their final journey of this life. They don't have long to live. We need to be very grateful for the people that work in the hospice industry because they're making our final days on this earth as comfortable as possible. Nobody wants to end up in hospice, but if you do end up in hospice, you really have to appreciate the people that work in the hospice industry. So some people can be in hospice quite a while, maybe six months, even longer. But what the insurance companies know that you may not know is that most people are only in hospice for 20 days or less. In fact, almost 50% of the people who enter hospice are in hospice for less than 20 days. So just imagine trying to find a life insurance company that will give somebody a life insurance policies when on average, they only have 20 days or less to live. My number two point is why I don't recommend burial, cremation, or final expense life insurance for people who are in hospice. If you're shopping for somebody who is in hospice and they potentially have less than 20 days to live, the insurance companies are not going to be too keen on offering any life insurance in that case. It's a little bit like if you enjoyed parachuting. Would you shop for a parachute before you jumped out of the plane or after you jumped out of the plane? Most people would shop for that parachute before they jumped out of the plane, before they actually critically needed that parachute to work for them. It's the same way with this burial, cremation, or final expense life insurance. You need to get the policy before you go into hospice, not after you go into the hospice. Again, the insurance companies are not going to be too keen on giving people life insurance policies when they have 20 days or less to live on average. Even if you're going to live six months or a year, the insurance companies are not going to be too hot on issuing anybody a life insurance when they are in hospice or have a terminal illness. Your only option in that case would be guaranteed life insurance. And that leads me to my next point. My number three point is that I don't recommend guaranteed issue life insurance for people who are in hospice. So technically you could qualify for guaranteed issue life insurance if you're in hospice, but there's a big catch. Guaranteed issue life insurance policies have two year waiting periods. The reason they have two year waiting periods is they don't ask any health questions at all because the insurance companies know if they offered first day coverage to anyone out there, then nobody would buy the insurance until they got diagnosed with a medical problem or went into hospice and the insurance companies would go out of business lickety split. So if somebody's in hospice and they have less than two years to live, a guaranteed issue life insurance policy does you absolutely no good at all. If an insurance agent out there is trying to sell you that policy, we would just recommend you get away from them as fast as possible. The other thing about guaranteed life insurance is that it's expensive. And the reason is they don't ask any health questions. So technically you could have cancer or you could be in hospice and still get that policy, but it doesn't do you any good because it's got a two year waiting period. The only thing a guaranteed issue life insurance policy will cover in the first two years is accidental death. And the chance of you dying of an accidental death when you're in hospice is just absolutely so remote. It's just crazy that people would even consider selling you a policy based off that accidental death benefit. Now, most guaranteed issue life insurance policies have a return of premium benefit where if you died of a health or medical reason in the first two years, you would get all the premiums refunded plus an additional typically seven to 10%. But again, buying a policy for where statistically 50% of the people have 20 days or less to live, it just makes no sense to buy a policy for that refund of premium benefit. So my number four point is when is the best time to buy a burial, cremation, or final expense life insurance policy? So the best time to buy burial, cremation, or final expense life insurance 
is before you need it. It's before you're diagnosed with a terminal illness. It's before you enter into hospice. The younger you are, the less this insurance coverage costs. The older you are, the more this insurance coverage costs. The healthier you are, the less this insurance costs. The more health conditions or health impairments that you have, the more it costs. But one important detail, these insurance policies are designed for people aged 50 to 85 years old. So think about it. Who has more health issues than anybody else on this earth? That's right, it's the people who are aged 50 to 85 years old. So these policies that offer first day coverage, and you should always go for first day coverage, but these policies that offer first day coverage are going to accept diabetes, high blood pressure, thyroid problems, heart attacks, as long as they've been far enough in the past, and many other issues, strokes, anything like that, they're going to offer first day coverage depending on the insurance company and depending on the length of time since that health event occurred. So that's what we specialize in at Funeral Funds is finding insurance companies that will offer people first day coverage. Now, if you're in hospice, you can get first day coverage. We've already talked about that. But if you've got just the average normal health problems as you get older, we have a terrific track record of getting people first day coverage. But if you just have the normal health problems that we normally get as we get older, give us a call and we will see about getting you that first day coverage that is so important to get. So my fifth and final point is what are your non-burial cremation or final expense options if you are in hospice right now? Again, your options are not good. The average stay in hospice for over 50% of the people is 20 days or less. That means it's going to be impossible to find an insurance company that's gonna give you a policy today for somebody who may die within the next 20 days. So if you're chatting with a funeral home, they might say, well, why don't you just do a prepaid plan? Think about the insanity of a prepaid plan for somebody who's got statistically 20 days or less to live. It's actually insane. It's not a prepaid plan. You're gonna to have to pay everything all at once. For a burial, you're gonna to have to come up with ten dollars to $15,000 on the spot. For a cremation, you're gonna to have to come up with anywhere from two to three to maybe even $4,000. So again, a prepaid plan for somebody who is in hospice is an absolute fallacy. Don't even listen to people who talk to you about a prepaid plan for somebody who's in hospice. Savings accounts are also not a good idea. Now, if you had the money already, you wouldn't be looking for this final expense insurance. So if you don't have the money, a savings account doesn't do you any good, especially again, when 50% of the people are gonna live 20 days or less. Just, we don't know anybody that can come up with five to $15,000 within 20 days on the spot. The other option out there is a payable on death account. Again, that's a separate account at a bank intended specifically for burial or cremation or final expenses. But again, if you're just searching for final expense, burial or cremation insurance and you're in hospice or somebody you love is in hospice, again, statistically 50% of the people die with less than 20 days to live. So there's just physically not enough time for people to save up the cash to put it into one of those accounts. So it does you absolutely no good to even consider that option. So my message to you is, is that it is so critically important that you get this insurance before you need it. If you've got the money in your savings account, then perfect, you don't need this insurance. You don't even need to be watching this video. But your insurance options once you're in hospice are zero. No insurance company is going to give you first day coverage if you're currently in hospice. So the most important thing we can do in life is learn from others' mistakes. So if you know somebody that's in hospice and they haven't taken care of this, learn from their mistakes. Get this insurance now on yourself before your family has to go through the same thing you're going through right now. One of the greatest final departing gifts you can leave your family is the gift of not having that financial stress to pay for your burial, cremation, or final expenses. So do the right thing for that last and final journey of your life. So if you need final expense life insurance, burial insurance, or cremation insurance, give us a call at our toll-free number. You can also find us online at our website. We look forward to helping you out with this. Until that day comes, you take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.